Now we can begin. Good afternoon. I would like to inaugurate hearing number four of the 183rd period of sessions of the Inter-American Commission for Human Rights. This hearing is entitled The Situation of Human Rights of Afro-Descendants in Uruguay and was requested by uh, the Coordinadora Nacional Afro-Uruguaya, the Afro-Uruguayan uh, coordinator and resident equality. My name is Julie Samanti. I am the president of the commission and the country reporter. I am joined by Commissioner Macaulay, the rapporteur for the rights of Afro descendants and the rights of older persons, Commissioner Arosemena, the rapporteur for the rights of children, and Commissioner Clark, rapporteur for the rights of LGBTI persons. We are also joined by the executive secretary. Tania Renom and the special rapporteurs Pedro Baca and Soledad Garcia Muñoz. I would like to greet the honorable representatives of the state, the civil society, and Mr. Jan Jarab, the representative of the High Commissioner for Human Rights for South America. Uh, before starting the hearing, I would like to explain uh, how it's going to work. First, the civil society will speak for 20 minutes. After that, the state will have 20 minutes as well. Mr. Jan Yarab will have seven minutes. And finally, the commission will have another 20 minutes. Then on the second part, we will start the um, section of comments or remarks by both parties for 10 minutes each. Now we have a digital full, a tool to measure time. We have bilingual interpretation and subtitles. These hearings are streamed and the recording of the hearings will uh, be available at the commission's YouTube channel in English and in Spanish. Now we will start with the 20 minutes of the civil society. Please introduce yourselves as you speak. Thank you. Distinguished Inter-American Commission of Human Rights, Honorable Commissioners, Ms. Okay. Commissioner Margaret May McCulloch, Honorable Representatives of the Uruguayan State, and everyone here at this virtual meeting. First of all, we would like to publicly thank the state of Uruguay for ratifying in 2017 the Inter-American Commission uh, Convention Against Racism, Racial Discrimination, and uh, intolerance, which we will call CRD, because it was the right step to fight this scourge. And we believe it is, uh, it should be, it should be an example for other states. Um, we are uh, here on behalf of the Afro-Uruguayan coordinator, uh, which is an organization made up of several NGOs which will be speaking, hearing about the lack of implementation of the CRD by the Uruguayan state and how this affects um, Afro-descendants and other ethnic communities in our country. This is particularly important because of the context, because 11 years after the hearing, our um, coordinator or coordinadora asked for this hearing, uh, the commission, sorry, um, we have to ask for another hearing because of the social emergency our community is in. 20 years after the declaration of the third conference on racism, almost five years after the ratification of the convention by the state of Uruguay, two years before the end of the decade for Afro descendants as per the UN and its acknowledgement by the OAS, we will observe the convention as a regional binding uh, legislative framework to uh, end racism and the uh, difficulties uh, of, that affect our population and our community in the region. But we need the states to work for that. For this hearing, we sent the honorable commissioners and Commissioner McCauley uh, shortened report about the situation of Afro-descendants in Uruguay in the midst of the complex situation because of the impact of COVID and the lack of action by the state. The state has aggravated racism and has affected our quality of life. It has increased inequality and there have been no specific measures to address the situation of Afro-descendants, both immigrants and natives, 
and we understand it is fundamental to start to start solving this with uh, the work of the state. It is of great concern that in our country, one of every ten Afro descendants, because and because of this condition, two of every poor persons are Afro descendants, and this situation has not changed in the past years, but the impact of COVID has had a stronger effect on our community because it has direct effects on living conditions, but also in the strategies to integrate these communities. 35 out of 100 uh, Afro-descendant children are poor. This is one of the countries that has shown the best figures uh, the equality indexes, but there is no equal access or care for part of its population. And uh, there has been no effect of the CIRDI in the straight state structure. There has been no attention paid to Afro-descendants and native peoples. Is, we should say that there have been conversations before this hearing with representatives from the Ministry for Foreign Relations to move forward in this aspect. And they, even though there was no actual progress, they did show empathy and willingness to work on this. So we believe that the lack of um, implementation of the CRD prevents our state to uh, follow up on its provisions. After four years, of four years after its ratification, the state has not appointed someone responsible to follow up on the implementation of this convention. And without its implementation, there is a negative impact on ethnic groups, in particular in this context, because of the uncertainty of the pandemic and uh, other warranties that had been gained in previous uh, administrations were lost because of the measures that were implemented. So we denounce the situation we live in our in our country. With, for example, with regards to racial justice, even though there is a convention against racism and racial discrimination, which was created by law 17817, this organism has no capacity to um, react to all the reports on racism and racial discrimination. And the mechanisms to receive reports are not everywhere in the country. So many people are unaware of them. Most of the people who are affected by this discrimination. In the past two years, there has, even be, there has been even more uh, cases of racism from uh, state agents to the community and to other officials who are part of the Afro descendants community. There was the case of Deborah uh, Rodriguez, an, an athlete from Uruguay. She suffered attacks in a sports show and nothing happened. In the department of Rivera, an Afro descendant died at a public hospital for discrimination and bad medical assistance. A violent verbal attack on a four-year-old child and his father. There was an aggression on Afro women or the case of Andres Vargas who lived on the streets and was burned in the streets. And he was, he was an Afro descendant. On the presentation of a book on African tradition, its author was attacked. A 40 year old man was attacked with a bat because of the color of a screen. An official was attacked by a user because of the color of a screen. And even though this is not a recent case, we are happy about the um, presentation of cases of forced disappearances in the that have not been repaired, even though they took place 40 years ago during uh, the our era of state terrorism. Other, pub, uh, other court officials were um, attacked because of their position in racial affairs. There were declarations by Mayor Besosi, who established a dichotomy 
between the normal population and the disabled and trans persons. Or in Montevideo, an official was attacked on a Zoom event during the month of Afro-descendants. There are strong legal loopholes here. That um, with regards to um, the uh, how racial crimes can be punished. Of course, there is a law forbidding incitation to hatred or um, attacking someone based on the color of their skin. But this law is part of um, a category called crimes against public peace. So it only defends crimes against society and does not consider behaviors that include moral violence and that affect the integrity of person, persons who limit the fundamental rights of the victims of racism or racial discrimination. That is why the uh, parliament is considering the inclusion of a fourth point in our criminal code that will penalize racial discrimination. This was presented by former legislator Klaus, Claudia de los Santos, seeking to address um, violent racial attacks. But so far, nothing has happened at the Constitutional Commission in our Congress. And the Afro-descendant community in Uruguay has seen some symbolic measures. So we would like the state to present a bill to declare the social emergency of the Afro-descendant population to carry out a state policy with regards to this. Now, with regards to public safety, Uruguay is first in the countries of South America when it comes to the relationship between the total of the population and those deprived of their liberty. In the report presented at the UN by Uruguay, over 1,700 people, 20% of people who were surveyed on a study in 2018, believe they are Afro-descendants. But in a presentation presented several days ago about a study from 2021, the prison rate It, for Afro-descendants is of 320 over 100,000. For the rest, it is 210 every 100,000. So one Afro-descendant has a likelihood of being incarcerated that is three times higher to that of the rest of the population. Evelyn, you're muted. I'm sorry. Lack of uh, numbers and statistics for 2020-2021 and the incorporation of the variable ethnic racial uh, precedents. We are concerned about the lack of statistic, uh, of official statistics for 2020 and 2021 about the Afro-Uruguayan population at a time where the pandemic Uh, deteriorated uh, or affected the lives of, of the population of Uruguay. And the, um, there were no statistics uh, disaggregating the uh, specific impact of the pandemic on Afro descendants. So no measures can be uh, implemented to address this. This was reported by our organization and no answer has been received from the Office for Planning and Budget. The um, Institute for Statistics depends on that uh, sector. So the Institute for Human Rights drafted a report that says that the omission of racial ascendancy in the um, survey for information is a human rights violation for Afro-Uruguayans. As we have already said 
we support this institution and we would like it to carry out studies we have already said this we would like to support this statistics institution so that it will carry out surveys to report on the situation of afro descendants during the pandemic we are now preparing the national census so it is important to improve the technical and operational capabilities of this institute when it comes to ethnic racial minorities it is vital to work with administrative records because many policies or political priorities were decided based on statistic data that have no uh, disaggregated data when it comes to race. Decentralization of public policies continues to be one of the major deficits in terms of uh, policies for racial equality. Afro descendants have um, are many in the departments of the center and the north of Uruguay. Still, the um, mayor's offices are weak counterparts to develop measures addressed at the Afro-descendant population. The existing initiatives, most of them, come from the civil society, and they do not have the financial means to develop them. Law 19122 was established for, with a duration of 15 years since its passing to quantify the access of Afro-descendants to um, positions to working positions at the state considering evaluations on it by different organizations we can say that there are implementation problems and we recommend changes so that it can be better executed the current government nevertheless has not presented any sort of proposals to modify this mechanism or to improve its implementation. The government, it's at its midterm and 0.6% of compliance has been achieved. So there, we need more participation in the uh, drafting of public policies. We need actions to improve the implementation of law 19.122. We observe that, in fact, the existence of the National Council for Racial Equity coexists with the uh, consulting body for this law. And all this was analyzed in further detail in the document we sent to this distinguished commission in accordance to uh, what we have described, we would like to point out the role of the CIRDI to move forward in key elements in the short term, like strengthening the um, our capabilities to uh, for racial justice, to improve our statistical standards, to have disaggregated data, to develop uh, public actions at a national level, but most particularly in the departments with a greater presence of the Afro department, especially Afro population, in particular in the center in Montevideo and the northern section of the party. Also for the midterm, we need to promote the relationship and the improvement of a comprehensive law for Afro descendants to harmonize domestic legislation to move forward in our fight against racial discrimination and racism. Therefore, based on the principles of equality and non-discrimination that are part of the Universal Declaration for Human Rights and the different international treaties that Uruguay has undersigned and 
of course, the Inter-American Convention Against Racism, say, um, Racial Discrimination, and All Forms of Intolerance, we would like to make the following recommendations and requests to the state of Uruguay. First, we would like to ask for a formal um, meeting with the ministries for foreign relations and social action to treat these issues and to um, work together hand in hand. We recommend the beginning of a work table for the construction of a roadmap to comply with the requirements established by the CIRSE. And also we need to define an institution for this in compliance with this convention. Also to call for the National Council on uh, Racial Equity so that there will be a group for the drafting of a bill to improve the living conditions of the Afro-descendant population in Uruguay and to promote changes on Law 19122 about affirmative action for Afro-descendants. Also, uh, interdisciplinary meeting to establish within the framework of support the um, work for policies for Afro-descendants, thus improving the capabilities of the Uruguayan state and to generate strengthening for the participation of citizens through the um, work of social organizations by Afro-descendants. It is vital to change law 18, 1 and 27 that creates the honorary uh, convention against racism because we believe that it has shown great weakness. We need to accelerate the process of passing article 149 of the criminal code that was presented during um, the previous term, which is currently at the committee of constitutional affairs and has been not and has not been treated during this period. We request an institutional mechanism that can act ex officio to investigate cases that might be considered discrimination or where the victims of some sort of uh, crime or rights violation is an Afro descendant in order to determine whether race was a factor and to protect the rights of Afro descendants who are affected by racism and racial discrimination. When uh, the mechanism for the follow-up on Circe is defined, we believe uh, it would be important to have a space of consultancy with the civil society so as to ensure the participation of stakeholders and the population the CIRSE addresses. We recommend the state of Uruguay to activate mechanisms in all three branches of power to resolve the racial violence that Afro-descendants experience. And that is why through the CRD, a procedure should be activated to advocate for them and to assess the situation in terms of racial justice in our country. It should contemplate the capabilities of our country to address and uh, punish the situations of racism and racial discrimination. Thank you. Coordinadora Nacional Afro Uruguaya and its members. Thanks. Thank you. You use a one minute of uh, extra minute of your time, so are going to take that minute out for your in your next intervention. So I would like to give the floor to the state for 20 minutes now. Thank you. Good afternoon. The state of Uruguay has the honor of appearing before the commission in this thematic period hearing that is part of the 183rd period of sessions. We would like to greet the commissioners and to greet especially commissioners Margaret May Macaulay, Roberta Clark, and 
president of the commission, Julissa Mantilla Falcón, as well as the special rapporteurs and the representatives of civil society and the national coordinator who has just spoken and any other persons who are participating in this hearing. In addition, we would like to thank uh, this hearing because it will help us to show the progress made by Uruguay since the thematic hearing of 2011. First of all, I would like to introduce the delegation that is here with me today. Mr. Daniel Perez, National Director of Work of the Ministry of Labor and Social Security, Dr. Ariel Sanchez, Deputy Director of the National Office Jordan. Service, and Natalia Jordan, Advisor of the Direction, and Charles Victivera, that is Ministry of the Appeals Court of the Fourth Section that represents the judiciary, Dr. Jonathan de la Subsecretaría del Ministerio de Turismo, la señora Rosa Méndez, gerenta del área promoción sociocultural de la Dirección de Desarrollo Social del Ministerio de Desarrollo Social, la ingeniera Ladies Aguilera, directora de la División Promoción Políticas Públicas para Afrodescendientes del Ministerio de Desarrollo Social, la señora Carolina Sanguinetti, de la Dirección Nacional de Educación del Ministerio de Educación y Cultura y por el Ministerio de Relaciones Exteriores, la doctora Marina Sande, directora de la Dirección de Derechos Humanos y Derecho Humanitario, el licenciado Javier Díaz, director de la Unidad Étnico-Racial y quien les habla, embajador Luis Bermúdez, director general adjunto para asuntos políticos del de Ministerio de Relaciones Exteriores. Señoras coordinadoras, en la petición de audiencia realizada por la Coordinadora Nacional Afro-Uruguaya y Race and Equality, se hace referencia a la falta de implementación y direccionamiento de la Convención Interamericana contra el Racismo, la Discriminación Racial y Formas Conexas de Intolerancia por parte del Estado Uruguayo. Uruguay ha ratificado la Convención Interamericana contra el Racismo, la Discriminación Racial y Formas Conexas de Intolerancia por la ley número 19.517 del 21 de julio del año 2017. Respecto a algunas cuestiones planteadas en la solicitud que refieren a artículos de la Convención, corresponde expresar que nuestro país no ha sido omiso en el cumplimiento de lo establecido en la Convención que nos ocupa, habiéndose desarrollado políticas, programas, acciones afirmativas y planes para garantizar el goce y ejercicio de los derechos y libertades fundamentales. Plans to guarantee the enjoyment of rights and fundamental freedoms. We have an internet connection problem, sorry. We are here to comply or to follow the inter-American standards of the OAS and also the universal system, United Nations. The state of Uruguay has advanced on including the ethnical as aspect as a transversal access to guarantee the full compliance of human rights in order to guarantee the quality opportunity of our descendants, recognizing the historical and cultural contribution of the country. It is recognized the need to uh, structure the policies in order to have the necessary resources for the functioning over time. However, as we have said before, there is a lot to be done, and this requires a structural change in society. Among the institutional measures that we have adopted in 2020, we approved the national budget for the excess uh, for the fiscal year 2020-2024, according to Law 1924, that includes the creation within the Ministry of Social Development of the Division of Promotion of Public Policies for Afro-Descendants, aimed at providing more support to social policies with an ethnical approach. This proposal uh, created a division within the Social Development Ministry, and therefore this office has its own budget to conduct concrete actions and to guarantee the observance of law 1922. This is an important fact and an important measure that allows to create 
and a state that guarantees the rights of our descendants. And these create new institutions in order to guarantee equality of opportunities and recognizes the cultural contribution according to what is established in the convention. Also, the convention was used to centralize the work and we became more effective and we have proved the, how committed the state of Uruguay is towards Afro-descendants. Among the actions, this new office includes several activities that will be detailed later. In addition, we have the program Accessos or Access, that is a program within the Social Development Ministry that creates opportunities to promote uh, job creation um, for Afro descendants between eight and 64 years old, and they are in a situation of economic vulnerability across the territory. This, um, the Ministry of Social Development will explain this later actions to face the COVID-19 pandemic among Afro-descendants. The Social Development Ministry implemented a set of measures to protect the vulnerable populations and groups. This includes food through the intervention of the National Institution of Food, INDA, such as the provision of food and other elements, etc. And According to data from June 2021, 21 percent of the food was delivered to Afro descendants in Uruguay. And other measures, for example, additional resources for um, children and a special subsidy of unemployment for workers that were in the informal sector. Among the policies to fight against racial discrimination, we would like to mention the National Plan of Racial and Afro-Descendant Equality, which in 2019 includes the National Plan of Racial Equity for 2019-2022, which is aimed at guaranteeing the full exercise of the rights of private descendants in Uruguay. This includes a systematic approach together with other state institutions using different mechanisms of racial equity within the state of Uruguay and includes involvement of civil society of Uruguay. The plan is aimed at advancing and deepening the design and implementation and evaluation of public policies and programs and actions that are affirmative with racial equity perspective. The guiding principles of the plan are connected to the 2030 agenda and the SDGs and establish a favorable context to promote equal, racial equity or equality. Uh, as a part of this national plan, we have developed several actions, including the following training actions, especially for officials and state agents. And this includes the ethnical aspect that is included in the training workshops and also the implementation of the law 1922 um, in order to promote the participation and the involvement of Afro descendants in educational areas. And we are working to promote and to provide support and to include the number or the quota of Afro descendants in the work environment figures show that these regulations are still to be uh, complied with. The progress and the implementation of these policies was supported by the creation of the National Council of Racial Equity, which is led by the Ministry of Social Development, and that is connected or includes the involvement of academia, social, uh, civil society, and other actors. This is also includes a promotion of public policies with a racial perspective and joint actions to promote or the progress of Afro descendants in the country. According to law 16, uh, 970 of 2019 and its regulations, the executive branch created the National Committee of Racial Equality and Afro descendants which is aimed at advising the executive branch in this area to promote the transversalization of the ethical, uh, the ethnical perspective and to work on the design and the creation of a national system of Afro-descendant and uh, racial equality. It is organized according to the main strategy 
lines of the racial uh, plan for Afro-descendants of Uruguay. This includes health conditions, education and culture, labor, employment, and social security, and the other axis is, is racism and discrimination. In February 2022, we have the annual operating program of the committee with the following lines of work. The creation of massive campaigns to fight racism, especially for the civil population, also with the involvement of Afro-descendants for the construction of the plan, the fight against any forms of discrimination in order to guarantee the rights of Afro-descendants, the carrying out of different activities to train, especially for those teams that are in charge of designing and implementing policies within the different bodies of the National Council, the strengthening of the articulation between the state and Afro-descendant civil society organizations to promote Afro-descendant collectives as the creators and the promoters of their own traditions, and also the creation of a national office for disseminating and promoting all the regulations regarding Afro-descendants to create sensibilization and training for public officials, including all the authorities and bodies within the National Council, and also cultural activities such as the National Day of Candombe, uh, Afro-Uruguayan culture and racial equality. In addition, the Commission Against racism and any other form of discrimination is aimed at proposing national policies and concrete measures to prevent and combat racism, xenophobia, and discrimination. And this includes uh, positive discrimination reg regulations and norms. Among its capacities, we have to analyze the current situation of Uruguay and to advise the executive branch to create specific legal norms and the amendment of the existing regulations to monitor the compliance of the national the domestic legislation, to promote educational campaigns, to compile and to keep updated information regarding international law in the matter, to centralize and to receive information about racist behaviors and xenophobic behaviors and discriminatory behaviors to have a record of said behaviors and to prepare the necessary legal claims to have a specific office for assistance to Afro-descendants who feel discriminated. The commission worked together with the national committee in order to have a training plan to be developed together, especially for migrants, especially in border areas, in border uh, cities uh, with the state of Brazil. And in order to uh, streamline its development, we decided to uh, work together with the ministries with a gender perspective, and we decided to facilitate the paperwork and to consider cultural aspects and to take into consideration human trafficking cases. Then we have another law from July 2019. Its first article, for item one of Article 28, changes uh, some aspects and establishes non discrimination principles within the military uh, system. And there will be no discrimination based on gender, age, opinion, and any other circumstance that could be personal or social. Also, the Ministry of Labor and Social Security included several actions and included the ethnical racial perspective in the comprehensive plan for employment promotion. It has provided training to uh, for public officials and the figures and the data provided by the Ministry of Labor will be used for following plans. The National Plan or the Office of Civil Service said that the Commission implementing law 1922 uh, held four meetings to design affirmative actions according to the cited law. The actions that were defined was the creation of an observatory for 
following up on the regulations and measures, the drafting of a report with suggestions and technical support for the Ministry of Social Development, the Ministry of Labor, the Ministry of Education and Culture, and the National Office of the Civil Service, the articulation with the state offices and bodies in order to improve communication with those organizations whose autonomy, uh, because of their autonomy, there could be some obstacles in the implementation of decided law and also the dissemination of information in social media and to create proposals for affirmative actions in the private sector through programs to favor employment for Afro-descendants. In addition to what has been expressed in within the executive branch, we would like to highlight that this initiative and this approach um, covers all the areas of the national government. Last year, towards the end, we have the parliamentary meeting uh, uh, or Afro parliament uh, meeting of parliamentary Afro descendants, and that meeting was held um, in the forum of parliamentary members held in Costa Rica in September 2021, and it was sponsored by the government of Costa Rica and the Fund of Population of the United Nations and the ECLAC. It was held within the framework of the first International Day for Afro-Descendants. Uh, in this opportunity, uh, Congress members of Uruguay participated and also congressmen and congresswomen from Honduras, Brazil, Ecuador, Mexico, Peru, Panama as well. This is just a summary, it's an opening presentation, Madam President, of all the work that we have conducted more recently. And this is to show you that we are implementing the racial perspective following the, uh, or in observance of the Convention on, uh, Convention Against Racism. I now would like to give the floor to my colleagues so that they explain some of the details of the actions that we are taking. Can we do it? Yes, you can give the floor to your colleagues and you can keep those minutes for your final intervention. So we are going to keep these two minutes for the second round. Thank you very much. Now I would like to give the floor to uh, the representative of the OECHR, Chan Charap. Good afternoon, can you see me? We can hear you, but we cannot see you. I'm sorry. Okay, then I will only speak and you will only uh, listen to my voice. Yes, thank you, Jan. Dear President of the Inter-American Commission, uh, defenders of the rights of Afro-descendants, representatives of Uruguay, thank you. Um, good afternoon, everyone, and it's, it is a great honor to be here to uh, discuss a priority for our office, the situation of Afro-descendants in Uruguay, uh, following up our work and the work of the convention. Because of my particip for my participation, I used information from Redesca and also information from uh, University of the Republic which allowed us to identify the progress and the challenges for the, uh, the work for those who are vulnerable. The creation of the National Council for Equity and Afro-Descendants and the creation of the National Plan for Afro-Descendants are very, very, very important because they acknowledge the situation of Afro-Descendants. Nevertheless, in spite of this um, progress in normative and uh, public policy, there is still the problem of no systematic, um, the, no systematic collection of disaggregated information about the situation of Afro descendants. So indicators with an approach for rights are necessary to draft the adequate policies and the cases of racial discrimination or violence suffered by Afro-descendants 
such as the ones mentioned by the petitioner, call for the strengthening of measures to protect this population. As the CERT committee, among other points, the um, definition of direct and indirect discrimination is necessary. And also, um, because this will allow for the investigation and reparation. It's not just about criminal law, but also measures to uh, protect victims in civil law with, with a particular emphasis on access to goods and services, even though there are uh, specific mechanisms in the case of racial discrimination as the um, honorary commission against racism, xenophobia, and other forms of discrimination, and also the judiciary, it is still necessary to have more effective coordination between the uh, diverse mechanisms. Also, as appointed by the CERT committee, it is of the essence to promote training for public officials and um, so that, um, in, and also to train uh, the um, target populations so they know how to defend their rights. Structural discrimination is shown in the poverty and social expulsion that affects Afro descendants disproportionately, as mentioned by the petitioners. According to official data, the proportion of Afro persons in poverty it, uh, more than doubles the, um, the general population. And the same occurs in the case of poor Afro children. In spite of certain progress that was achieved in terms of work and education by the general population, compliance or respect for these rights are still of concern in terms of work formality, there are serious gaps. In 2019, 34.5% of Afro-descendant workers were informal workers. Um, while non-Afro informal workers were 23%, the Afro population receives less years of education, no matter where they live in the country, and access more precarious employment. There is intersectional discrimination, de facto intersectional discrimination against women in Uruguay, and that is shown in, the, um, in early pregnancy, lower uh, salaries, and difficulties to join the workforce and in the lesser degree of participation in political and public life. So it is necessary for national public policy to take into account gender perspective in a transversal manner to eliminate discrimination in all its forms. This brief outlook of the situation allows us to conclude that it is necessary to uh, have more human resources better data, updated data, and disaggregated data in order to uh, design policies with the stakeholders. And they should all include ethnic perspective and a multi-sectorial perspective as well. Apart from COVID-19, because it had a, a, a sorry, COVID-19 had a differentiated impact on this population. This needs to be studied and understood so as to make the best public policy decisions to address the situation of a population that is affected by inequality and discrimination. I would like to uh, share my solidarity towards the Afro community in Uruguay because with their work, they have been bringing about changes and my office is always at your disposal and the disposal of um, authorities and right holders in order to uh, solve the multiple inequalities that affect Afro descendants. Thank you for your, your attention. Thank you, Mr. Jarab. I will now begin the participation of the Inter-American Commission. First, I would like to ask Commissioner Margaret May McCauley, Rapporteur for Afro descendants, if she wishes to speak. 
Indeed, Madam President, thank you very much. Um, I can't, could not possibly pass up this opportunity. Um, thank you. Um, I greet all um, civil society representatives warmly and thank you for being here and um, for having us deal with this um, very concerning issue. Um, um, as you know, um, I can't remember exactly how many years that shows you how our work is in the Commission. Uh, when I was in Uruguay uh, to meet with Afro descendants, uh, five, five, wow. Yes, that's, a too, that's too long a time, yes. And to meet with um, the, um, we met with the president and I'm also members of um, heads of ministries and so on. But also, uh, it is too long a time. But I also, I also do um, warmly greet all the representatives of the state of Uruguay and thank you very sincerely for being here because it's a much more fruitful and uh, um, advantageous uh, uh, for the entire work in the area that we're dealing with or any area of human rights when the state participates in the hearings. So I thank you for being here and for participating. I, I, um, I just have um, a couple of things to say and the question to ask, which um, part of which you can answer, the, the answer now and part later. I would expect, the, my question will be directed to the state, but I would expect civil society if they wish to um, make an input in it. The first thing I wanted to mention is I have, um, I am now the Rapporteur for um, the Rights of the Elderly. And, and um, as such, I am extremely concerned about the elderly in, within the Afro-descendant community. Because if the able-bodied, um, not elderly, younger persons of this community are having and living in such disadvantages, then I, I am very concerned even more so about what is the situation of the elderly Afro-descendant people. I, I of course will, I will be particularly concerned about the women as well um, in this group. I, I just started the rapporteurship, took over the rapporteurship, and so we will be working apace in, in regard to them. Um, that being said, I wish to ask, I comment and then I ask my question. I noted from your, what I could see from your delegation that I do not see any Afro-descendant member of your delegation. Um, I'm not saying there's none, but I, I, I can't see any. And if you do have any, could, they, could you please point that out to us, please? And my question really then turns on this, was how many Afro-descendant persons? And I, there are two Afro-descendants. I see two persons' arms go up. Three. Yes, well, um, <laughs> Oh, thank you, thank you. I, 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 I can't see it from my, my camera. Anyway, how many Afro-descendant persons do you have in your ministry and at, at the various levels of seniority right to the entrance, the person, a newly um, um, engaged person from the highest to the lowest? And which, which I hope you can answer now. And how many Afro-descendant persons do you have in the other ministries of Uruguay? And I would be most grateful for the commissions uh, as, um, at work, if you could give us um, this information, not only in numbers, but also with disaggregated information as to age, gender, levels of um, education, um, 
economic status um, and um, sexual orientation as well. Um, so if you can, I, I don't expect you can give me that information here today, but if you can, it would be super helpful. If you cannot, could you please send it to us in writing? And I am hoping that you can do so within two months of this hearing. And um, we can then communicate this information to civil society um, for their future co um, comment. I, I thank you all um, for being here again. And I rest assured that we view the position of Uruguay very, very importantly in relation to the rights of Afro-descendant persons and to the movement towards a quality of treatment and um, um, equitable treatment for them. Because you, you being the second country to um, state to ratify the convention, ensured that it uh, came into effect. And we, we look forward to you leading the, the move towards real and complete implementation. Thank you. Thank you, Rapporteur. Now I will give the floor to Commissioner Rapporteur, uh, sorry, Commissioner Arosemena. Thank you, Madam President. I would like to greet the representatives of the uh, different organizations from the civil society who have given us a chance to uh, listen to key aspects at this hearing and also the honorable representatives of the state for giving us that information that um, as I would like because of what the civil society said and the representative of the high commissioner, Mr. Jarab, whom I would like to greet as well. I would like to um, ask about three particular points. The first one is that you have heard, uh, we have heard about the legislation. There are certain institutions, but the civil society has pointed out that there's a need to review the regulations in order to adjust uh, to a development plan for specialized care and uh, attention to Afro-descendants. So I would like to know if, what's the dynamic in the state in terms of um, normative reform? Now, the second issue mentioned by the civil society was the importance of having data. They said that in uh, gathering the data, there was no specificity or there was not an ethnic or racial approach that it is important to have in data, to break down the data so that you can really assess the aspects you are trying to evaluate. And finally, with regards to the institutions for the protection of the rights of children, you have said that there, have, there have, has been a situation of attacks and abuse against children. Um, maybe it was a particular case, but I would like to know if the institutions, which I know that are sound, the institutions for the protection of children, well, I would like to know the role of this institution in acknowledging a differentiated intersectional approach that children deserve, that children, that Afro-descendant children need. Because if this begins at childhood, this acknowledgement of the dignity of human beings, 
then the transformation processes in culture will be in short. We need to start at a very young age. So I would like to know if this institution has a specific approach to address these protection measures, these positive measures that are necessary for children Afro-descendants. Thank you. And if you can't answer everything right now, of course, we can receive them in written form. Thank you very much, Madam Commissioner. I will now give the floor to Commissioner Clark. Thank you very much, uh, uh, President, and good afternoon, uh, representatives of civil society organizations, as well as representatives of the state, and of course, my inter-American colleagues. I listened carefully to the deliberations, and uh, I want to recall the closing remarks of the representative of the civil society. Several recommendations were made, and I want to ask you about two in particular. You talked about um, developing a roadmap to comply with the convention. That was one recommendation. And the second one was defining an institution in compliance with the relevant article um, in the convention. I think that might be um, Article 13. I was wondering, thinking now about what the state spoke to, the state spoke about um, the, an, a council for racial equity, and it also spoke about a national action plan. And I was wondering to what extent these two mechanisms, which the state spoke about, were different from what you were um, asking for. That's my question um, of the civil society organization. And forgive me if I don't quite understand. I guess that's what this um, hearing is about. And in relation and to the state, in relation to the, the establishment of the council and the development of the action plan to which you referred, can you advise whether or not communities of um, Afro descendants were involved? in the elaboration and constitution of these mechanisms. Um, also, I want to ask in relation to the, we heard maybe, a, a, I think about 10, about 10 um, incidents of, of racial violence or racial discrimination against a range of people. And I want to ask whether or not, and as, as it is um, envisaged under article 10, uh, how, what would trigger investigations and access to justice for those who experience racial violence, violence uh, motivated by race, racism and racial exclusion. And in that regard, thinking about those who have experienced violence and exclusion, and also socioeconomic exclusion, um, as you may know, I'm also the rapporteur for LGBTI. And I want to ask that intersectional question, is there any data on LGBT persons who are Afro descendants and, the, and their experience of racial discrimination and racial violence, is it connect, collected as the data disaggregated? Um, I have two, two last questions, which of course you can answer uh, in writing, not now, but are there affirmative action policies in place for employment, especially in the public sector? And are there affirmative action policies or laws which, which um, ensure uh, quotas in the legislature. And finally, a lot, about, a lot of racism, even after you change the laws, a lot of racism is embedded in culture. What campaigns or approaches is, has, has the state undertaken in collaboration with Afro-descendant communities to address the cultural change and the social norms change that is required to eradicate racism? Thank you very much. Muchas gracias, comisionada. Eh, quería agregar un par de puntos antes de darle la palabra a los relatores. Thank eh, you, commissioner. I would like to make some comments before giving the floor to the rapporteurs. First, in the same line with regard to the information provided by the state and the issues proposed by civil society, I would like to highlight the issue of structural discrimination and the intersectional approach that are Afro-descendant persons that also suffer or have other um, uh, relations, for example, Afro-descendants women or Afro-descendants LGBTI persons or age issues. Uh, in terms of public policies, Commissioner Clark asked about affirmative policies, but I would like to ask you about access to justice. 
Yes, what happens in the specific case of girls um, Afro and women? Is there any issues or is any other specific uh, attention for uh, sexual violence, for example, if there are, for example, forced pregnancies because of a sexual abuse in an Afro-descendant women, and for example, if a person does not belong to Afro-descendant community and the consequences that that has on the community. I'm thinking about uh, what happens in other communities, for example, in Colombia, the birth of girls and boys as a result of sexual abuse. And this is a very negative aspect in several communities. And in the same line, I would like to ask about sexual and reproductive health policies. Those are my questions so far. And now I would like to give the floor to Executive Secretary Tanya Renault if she has any questions. Thank you, Madam President. Good afternoon to the representatives of civil society. Good afternoon to the representatives of the state of Uruguay. And good afternoon to the representative of the United Nations, Mr. Jan Jarab. I would like to greet uh, with a lot of affection the commissioners that are in this hearing. We understand very well that the uh, approval and the ratification of a new international instrument requires time for its adequate implementation at the domestic level. But I would like to know what measures or what progressive measures the state of Uruguay has established and created in order to guarantee the legislative or the harmonization of the convention with the domestic framework. That's my first question. And I would like to know the role of civil society in the design and implementation of public policies. You mentioned a lot of public policies that are taking place in Uruguay, but we would like to know if in those public policies or in the design, you have the involvement of civil society organizations or representatives of Afro-descendants. And I would like to mention as well that the UN representative, Jan Jarab, already said that we need more coordination between the different agencies of the state that work uh, to fight uh, social discrimination. And we would like to know if you have thought about those institutional or interinstitutional coordination mechanisms. If we don't have time for answering all the questions, as Commissioner Margaret May Macaulay, you can send those answers in writing in order to conduct our monitoring tasks. Thank you, Madam President, and thank you, the representatives of civil society who requested this hearing and are bringing these issues to the table. Thank you, Secretary. We have an issue because we are running out of time. I would like to request the special rapporteurs to participate in the last part of the hearing or to send their questions in writing because we need to um, comply with all the times and the schedule. Now I would like to give the floor to the civil society for 10 minutes. Carlos, can you hear me? Good afternoon. I would like to introduce Carlos Quesada from the Institute of Racial Equality, who will speak first. Thank you, Noelia. Thank you, commissioners and representatives of the state of Uruguay. When Uruguay ratified the convention, the Afro-descendant civil society of Argentina was really happy because Uruguay was a pioneer in the area of human rights together with Costa Rica. However, we are concerned about the implementation of the convention. Five years ago, we believe that that harmonization would have happened with respect to the commission and to the state of Uruguay. We expected the state of Uruguay to mention the articles of the convention and to show us what they have implemented so far and what's still pending. I'm saying this because of two specific 
aspects that were left outside. And as petitioners, we are going to send this documentation in writing. One has to do with Article 4 of the Inter-American Convention that is basic, that has to do with, and I love that Commissioner Baca, uh, Relat, Rapporteur Baca is here, that has to do with the restrictions to freedom of expression. Why? Because Article 4 establishes that states somehow need to control and to monitor all that information on the internet that could pro, uh, promote hatred and racial discrimination. And this is a problem not only in Argentina or Uruguay, because that perpetuates stereotypes in the region. And another important aspect that the delegation of Uruguay has not covered has to do with access to justice. Uh, Commissioner Julissa, this is in general terms, has to do with access to justice for uh, Afro-descendants and also racial profiling, how this racial profiling affects especially young Afro-descendant men before justice. I don't want to take the time of my colleagues, so that's what we are going to send you in writing. Thank you, Noelia. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you, commissioners uh, who are here today, and also to the representatives of the states for this thematic hearing. For us, this is space of dialogue is very important to accelerate the process towards implementation of public policies that are effective for Afro-descendants, especially so that the state of Uruguay can identify the institutions that can implement the Convention Against Racism. Uh, we need to have an institution that is able to deal with ethnical questions or issues in the state, because when there are several situations of racial discrimination, there is nobody that defends Afro-descendants. Right now, the Commission Against Racism within the Ministry of Culture is omitting the legislation or is ignoring the legislation because three members of civil society who belong to the commission decided to resign because of the lack of action of the commission or the we see several cases of racial discrimination against children and the state never um, publicly criticized this situation or never and we have issues regarding justice. The access to justice has been very difficult, especially in situations of racial, racial discrimination. That's why this commission against racism should be improved and we should think of other solutions. We welcome the creation of institutions for Afro-descendants. We know that there is a budget, but we have been notified that in 2021, the budget was not executed, no actions ha were executed and there was no real budget, budget for them. We don't want this to happen in following years because we know that these are the best years for your administration before, before the change of administration. And within the framework of the COVID-19 pandemic, we denounced or complained that the Statistic Institute did not include the racial variable and they did not have information regarding afro descendants we have included this this was a violation of the rights of the afro descendant community and we believe that this should be solved this should be repaired by providing current data regarding the afro descendant population you told us that 21 percent of food delivered was for afro descendants uh, this talks about the situation of vulnerability of the Afro-descendant community, and we cannot wait more for having effective public policies. We know that there is a project that is being financed, that is to be implemented since 2019, but there are several excuses and never is being implemented. So we, will, we hear the delegation of the state. We know that they are talking about plans and planning, but those plans are never effective. And we want to show how the situation is more and more serious for Afro-descendants. And it's not about equality, but also it's about racial violence. With regard to some of the questions, it's impossible to answer all the questions, but I think that it's very important those about the reforms uh, we have uh, here. Um, 
Charles who has defended the from the passing of Article 149 that has to do with all the uh, situations of criminal the, um, of racial discrimination in the criminal proceedings. This is something that we need to have. Also, we have recommended to have a supervisor, a person that oversees or supports closely all the cases of crime, of racial discrimination or violation of rights of Afro-descendants to see what is the role of the racial component in those situations. These are all recommendations that we believe that should be there and that will accelerate the process of uh, public policies and the defense of our human rights. We believe that it's necessary to have this hearing in order to establish dialogue spaces that are more proactive. So that's basically what I wanted to say. Now I would like to give the floor to my colleague Juan Pedro Machado. I don't know how much time do we have. You have four minutes. One of the situations that we want to emphasize has to do with the situation of the territoriality of the instruments to fight racism. Um, the current status of the commission, especially those people who are located in the north part of the country or that who work in the border, uh, what we see is that in the border, there are several uh, cases of racial discrimination. And these people do not have access to the proceedings and they cannot follow up the complaints or the proceedings. What we want to say is that the modus operandi uh, in order to receive the complaint and to process it through one of these bodies prevents the possibility of people to have a role or to have a, a voice in the proceeding. The person that is being discriminated is not able to participate freely uh, because usually time makes people uh, be without answers. So we believe that there should be a system or a mechanism so that a public official has the ability to act ex officio and to analyze the different situations of discrimination that exist and to be a bridge to connect the victims with the judicial space. Because what we have identified is that complaints are not processed adequate, uh, in an adequate way. The other uh, issue that we wanted to mention or to report is that in spite of all the, all the regulations and norms, we have law 1922 and the relationship or the connection with access to the job market, we have some gaps there regarding the inclusions or content regarding Afro-descendant culture, especially within the educational programs. And in that regard, there is not a specific source of employment, for example, in the Council of uh, Racial Equality, etc., and also in other periods of time. What we are seeing is that uh, this is not addressed. The issue, the theme is not addressed and there is no process for that. And in spite of the conversations that we have had with some authorities, we believe that it would be good to start working this issue in the spaces of training the trainers or, or the professors, because what we see is that the theme is treated in a very unstable way. If we have one more meeting, there are two important issues regarding the fight against racism. I would like to repeat them. If a country has statistics or figures that have a high level of racism, we have 20 or 30% of Uruguay's prison population 
um, um, Uruguay is one of the countries with most more political pris prisoners or, or prisoners and 20 or 30 percent of those in prison are Afro descendants. Um, this sometimes this is because they have committed crimes, but also because there are some situations in the criminal proceedings that they are prosecute, uh, persecuted. One, we want to uh, say that the population in prison is usually young, Afro-descendants have to live in the outskirts. And therefore, Afro-descendants live in irregular settlements. And irregular settlements are huge in Uruguay, they are growing and we don't have access to housing. And then we have a connection to poverty. Sorry, thank you, but you are running out of time. Thank you so much. Now the delegation of Uruguay has the flow. Thank you for your comments and your questions. Uh, because of the formalities that are required, we will use the time frame announced by the commissioner. We have 60 days and we will be giving answers in writing. But in order to give you some answers, we would like to make some additional comments and to give you some answers right now for some of the questions that you asked. So I would like to give the floor to the representatives of the Ministry of Social Development and to the representative of the Ministry of Labor and Social Security, and also to the National Office of Civil Service of the Ministry of Education and Culture, and to Judge Charles on behalf of the judiciary. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon to everyone. My name is Rosa Mendez. I'm manager of the area of cultural promotion of the Ministry of Social Development. First of all, I would like to answer on behalf of the state and on behalf of each of the representatives that are here today, the question about Afro-descendant persons that are still or that are that have uh, a position within the state. We have a new restructuring of the Ministry of Social Development in 2020-2021. I, as Afro-descendant woman, uh, I am 39 years old. And you were uh, asking about sexual orientation. I am lesbian and I am the manager of the area of cultural promotion. I am studying a development in the School of Social Sciences. I also would like to let you know that within the new structure of the Ministry of Social Development, where I work as a manager, I am the first Afro-descendant woman manager of this new administration. Uh, within this social cultural promotion area, we have the division of public policies for Afro-descendants. I have the director of the area. She's also an Afro-descendant woman. She's a migrant woman and she's an engineer. And today with us, we have also Javier Al Diaz, who is, has a bachelor's degree. And we have here the a leader of the ethnical racial unit of the foreign ministry. He is also a descendant. Also, I would like to say that we have a Afro descendant sen senator in the parliament, and we have other units who have uh, Afro descendant persons working in those areas. In addition, I would like to mention, and I would like to give the floor to the director for the promotion of public policies for Afro descendants. We have a budget that has been allocated, and this never happened before in the past, especially for Afro descendants. I would like to let you know about a consultation that or a question that was asked regarding uh, the ethnical variable and the approach that we are using. And I would like to let you know about the National Institute of Statistics. Um, we conducted uh, household interviews and the racial ent ident entity or identity uh, council uh, to which I belong, what we did is we called the president of the National Institute of Statistics so that he could explain us what happened in the technical form regarding the fact that the ethnical variable was not included in those interviews or in those surveys. And I also would like to let you know that we 
had extraordinary sessions in June last year that included civil society organizations and the different agencies that participate in the racial council or commission participate. And we have all the participants working in 2021 and 2022. The council started to operate in February 2020. So right now we have 10 sessions. Only one was extraordinary. That is the one that I mentioned before that was in June. And in addition, I wanted to talk about implementation of uh, policies of campaign and dissemination. We are working together with the National Public Administration Agency in order to provide uh, training for teachers in educational centers. What we want to do is to have a bigger reach. Um, and this has to do with the history of our country. And this is a debt that we have for the future. And I also would like to talk about specific situations that are questions that you have asked about the poverty levels and this gap that we have for and have had for a very long time. What we see is that our the Ministry of Social Development has had a key role because we work with vulnerable populations in Uruguay and we are underrepresented. Afro-descendants especially in terms of Afro-descendants, but we are working with all the programs and units to make sure that each program complies with the 8% uh, quota established in the law 1922, but also we are trying to have in each of these programs within the ministry to have the quota and to have measures and indicators uh, to take joint actions especially to favor our population. Now I would like to give the floor to the director of the public policy uh, division for Afro-descendants. She will let you know more about this office. Good afternoon, everyone. I, it's wonderful to be here to have this Dialogue, we believe, is very important because of uh, what's being expressed by the civil society and now this opportunity for exchange between the um, Inter-American Society, uh, sorry, the Inter-American Commission and, and the state. I am an engineer. I am the director of the uh, Division of Public Policies for Afro-Descendants. It's a new division within the state structure. It's a division that, as the ambassador was saying, stemmed from our budget law, 19924, which was passed in 2020. And became operational in the middle of, 19, of 2021. It's a division that shows and reaffirms the state's commitment in terms of policies and actions for Afro-descendants. And I'm saying this because this law that created this uh, division was a law that was passed at Congress by all the uh, political parties at Congress, which showed the commitment and the need to work these issues. It's a division that, as I was saying, gives uh, more hierarchy to this issue because before that there hadn't been a space within the state with uh, this high level and we operate within the uh, Ministry for Social Development. And last but not least, it also advocates for the importance and in a certain way, the commitment and the fight against discrimination. And I'm saying this because it's the first time that the state of Uruguay creates a space with its own budget to work 
directly in actions addressed at Afro-descendants. So as the civil society was celebrating this, the state also celebrates the creation of this division, which has its own um, budget to execute. I know that there were several questions and I need to give the floor to the rest of the members of our delegation, but just to wrap up, I wanted to mention something that is directly linked to the uh, follow-up of affirmative action for Afro-descendants in our country. We know that we have law 19.122, which uh, within the five national plan for open government, which is this plan that has our country uh, strategy to co-create plans in Uruguay. This uh, stemmed from the committee that was in charge of the law. It, it created a national office for civil work and uh, education and it, it created an observatory for the implementation of policies addressed at Afro-descendants. This strengthened accountability, transparency, and citizens' participation in terms of actions for the uh, production of information and the availability of information for Afro-descendants. We would also like to say that in this fifth plan of open government, This was created after listening to the needs and requests of the civil society. The remaining answers will be sent in written form. And now I will give the floor to the fourth member of our delegation. Director Daniel Perez, please. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for inviting us here. I would also like to thank the civil society because it's great to listen to its request because that allows for national development um, and that allows us to improve in such important issues as this one. I am Daniel Perez, National Director of Employment at the Ministry for Employment and Social Security. I would just like to uh, mention some of the actions that have been implemented. First of all, in the uh, platform Via Trabajo, which is a platform that has to do with job opportunities and that works as a middleman for the um, population. And it has, um, here we record uh, ethnic and racial information. We right now have 35,000 Afro-descendants who are registered at this platform for work. And with regards to training and, and education between 2017 and 2021, there were over 13,000 training programs for Afro-descendants. And between 2020 and 2021, 5,600 training sessions were held 63% of the attendees were women, Afro-descendant women, and 37% were men. And I'm saying this, uh, sorry, uh, we're talking about persons here, not trainings. So we account the amount of persons who were trained, sorry, not the sessions. And also uh, training was provided to the uh, public employment office officers because we trained them as well with um, perspective on um, rights, because we were trying to incorporate ethnic uh, racial factors so that they would become aware of this. Now there's a specific program called I Study and Work, which is, I think it's unique in the world. We're talking about scholarships for uh, young kids, uh, who uh, are given a job opportunity at the state for one year. We have recorded the variable and we have met an 8% quota of Afro-descendants in, uh, in 2014. This quota was met only in Montevideo, which is the capital of the country. But after that, all the uh, departments 
who worked with this and who had amount, an amount of population that was enough for it to meet its quota uh, actually started fulfilling it. And this quota is based on the uh, over the total amount of vacancies in the entire country. And last time we reached 14% of Afro-descendants who are part of this um, program. I'm sorry, but you've run out of time. No, no worries. I understand that there's a lot of information. Just to wrap up, I would like to thank the organizations for the information they provide continuously. I think their presence is extremely important for the commission. I would like to thank the state as well for being here, for participating. I would like to um, also greet Ambassador Washington Abdallah. I see you there. And apart from that, the commission would like to stress that in 2021, we published a thematic report on social, economic, cultural, and environmental rights for Afro-descendants. Uh, it was a work of the commission and Redesca. Unfortunately, we've run out of time, but our rapporteurs will be able to send you their comments as well. But the commission is at the, your disposal, in particular Redesca, uh, because we are very much concerned about visibilization and many questions were asked. And I think it's very positive, even though you weren't, I, you weren't able to reply right now, this is a dialogue that needs to go on. We are at the disposal of both parties to exchange information, to visibilize the situation and to respect non-discrimination with an intercultural and intersectional approach. I would like to thank my colleagues at the commission, at the executive secretariat, and now we wrap up this first day of hearings. Have a great afternoon. Thank you very much. Thank you.